Hi, sweeties. Welcome in. Oh, God. Hello, sweeties. Come on <laughs> in. It's Unnecessary <laughs> Roughness, Barstool's College Football Podcast. Here to talk about college football, sweeties. <laughs> All right. We're presenting. There, there are inevitably going to be people that did not listen to the last episode. They're going to be that are very confused what you're doing right now. Come on in, sweeties. It's okay. You're, you're doing fine. You're doing great. You're, You're so doing good. great. All right. It's uh, brought to you by High Noon Hard Seltzer. Casey, college football coming up Saturday. No better time than to crack a high noon. No better time, whether you're at a tailgate, you're on a couch, you're at a bar, wherever you are, it is time to crack a high noon. The vodka, the tequila. Again, I know we've mentioned it a million times. The iced tea, Ev, no carbonation. It just hits different. It just hits different. Sometimes you don't want the carbonation. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. And those teas, they hit you right. Casey, life's all about options. It's true. And you know, know they give you options. You want carbonation? Boom. They got it for you. You don't want carbonation? Boom. They got that too. High noon. It's it's for everyone 21 up. Every yeah, Drink responsibly. Uh, I know, like, I've been in New York and Chicago today. I know we're both in Chicago. There's that chill crisp in the air. It's not quite chilly yet, but it's getting there. A little bit of hoodie season in both New York and Chicago made me just want to watch football and drink a high noon. Visit highnoonspirits.com. Find a pack near you. All right. Let's talk about a week five of college football. And this six. is one. This what? Isn't it six? Who cares? Okay. Who really cares? Is it? Is it week six? I'm pretty sure. I believe so. I don't I don't want to like I'm not trying to correct you to be an asshole. I just Wait I don't so. want people I don't want people to think it was last week, you know. Welcome to week six of college football. We're going to talk about that. We're going to get into our categories in just a second. But as I look at this, uh, we're not going to piss on your leg and tell you it's raining. This certainly doesn't have the sex appeal that Alabama Georgia had last week or the monster slate that's coming next week when you have Texas, Oklahoma and Ohio State, Oregon and uh, so on and so forth. You've got plenty of games next week. Ole Miss, LSU. you got a lot of big games next week. You don't have as many this week, but As we all know, having watched this sport for a long time, been on the show for a long time, uh, that's often when college football just throws you uh, an incredible week and it throws you shit you'd never even thought about. So we go into it with an open mind, but there's not a whole lot here. Now, this week was a whole lot sexier in August. In August, if you looked at this week and you saw, oh, my God, Clemson's at Florida State. Oh, my God. Uh, Georgia and Auburn. Oh, my God. National championship rematch. Michigan and Washington. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'll just start there. Worst national title rematch imaginable. It's honestly shocking how like forgettable it is that it is a national championship like rematch. Like obviously we know that, but like all week, you know, you we would have been seeing like headlines all over the place, like, you know, what's Washington gonna do? It just, I mean, they're just two completely different teams. Washington and obviously not even in the same conference. It has to be the most disappointing rematch ever. You're right. Like, just an absolute deflation of a game. Well, listen, I know this Saturday when uh, Jim Harbaugh and Michigan roll into Washington to take on Kalen DeBoer and the Huskies, it's going to be incredible. I know Michael Penix is gone, uh, but but listen, with uh, with J.J. McCarthy, at quarterback, and Blake Corum, like, Michigan and Washington is going to be exciting, and it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be none of those things because both these teams kind of suck, and I like that, Big Ev. I just I like it. I'm sorry. I don't mind it. I yeah. don't mind it. Uh, Wash, Brent, I don't, I don't know if, you, uh, if you've seen this. I saw an interesting stat today. There's two quarterbacks in the country this year that have thrown 10 touchdown passes and no interceptions. You know who they are. Well, since they're in this game, as we're talking about this game, I'm guessing Will Rogers? You're correct. He is one of them. That's correct. Who's the other one? The other one is South Alabama phenom Gio Lopez. That made Liam happy. Look at that. I know it did. Blood they just have a short that? list of options. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you've got Michigan and Washington. It, what does it say that the number 10 team in the country is going to Washington, who's just been outright bad and not, not very good this year? Maybe not outright bad. They, I guess they've been all right. But they, they have been very good, and, and they're going to Washington, and the number 10 team in the country is a two-and-a-half-point dog, and nobody nobody's surprised at all. Because they're going to lose. <laughs> but because they also, also, and you get more like that. And the nitty gritty of it, Washington last week, and I'm a Rutgers guy, bet Rutgers. Yeah. Washington should have won that game by maybe double digits. Missed three field goals, made a lot of mistakes. 
They that Washington's a, a good football team. I think they've been they've made some like they they've lost games. They I don't want to say they shouldn't have lost their game. They definitely shouldn't have lost the Rutgers game. I think they're better than probably they're getting. Well, you see, Vegas is giving them credit for how good they are, but I think that's why I think people will be surprised by that. But they're a team that I think could ease like if things they have the talent to be five and zero right now. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and the game they lost against Washington State I, that was a coin flip game as well. Um, so. Uh, the other, I guess, another big game is is, te- is Texas A and M at Missouri. Now, Casey, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now, as I've do- dove into this, I'm going to go ahead and be contrarian because I everybody in their mom, nobody, nobody thinks Missouri's winning this game. Everybody thinks A and M is winning this game. Everybody, and I'm not saying this as a reflection on A and M. Like I think they're solid, but it's an awful lot of disrespect for a Missouri team who is who was 11 and two last year and is four and zero this year. To just assume, I mean, I don't know a single soul that thinks Missouri is going in there and they're they're underdogs too. It makes me think we're all missing something. I I agree with you. Like, the, I mean, I'm obviously going to take A and M, and we can talk about the game itself. But it is alarming to me that everybody outside of the Missouri fan base is jumping on A and M when, like, Missouri's four and zero. Like, you know, they've had some close games, but like, we, I mean, as a collective college football base. Doesn't seem to be giving Missouri a lot of credit. I still think AM is going to win, but you are right. It is concerning. It's like when you see the game day graphics or the graphics on our show and it's like all the same team, usually yeah. that's the wrong thing. Like obviously Missouri fans, and like I've had Missouri fans in my mentions every week when we are on the show outside of this game, like, why are you guys bearing Missouri? What has Missouri done? Like, you know, all these things. I'm like, I guess maybe we have somehow not buried them, but underrated them and not giving them credit maybe well, they little- haven't looked overly impressive for a team that was preseason top 10 you know they they barely survived vanderbilt they struggle with boston college a little bit they have they haven't looked like a top 10 team at all this year um that doesn't mean they can't go to uh to a and m and win i mean notre dame who i don't think is a top 10 team either went to a and m and won so different team though different team it is so, a different team different Ed, no, certain- wrong quarterback I mean, that's a, everyone knows that it's I'm out. I'm Brent. I'm almost glad you said that. Cause I think I was going to just not blindly bet A&M, but I was so locked in on a and I, I think I needed that step back to be like, is ever, is it, is it, am I, is it too easy? Just check it. That's all I'm saying. Because... I'm not saying I won't be on A&M either that, I, but I needed a, it's that time in the week where I needed that like reset. I need a mental reset. <laughs> it's just it, it, it when you get to Thursday and you you like a game and then everybody else in the entire country likes that game too you're like now hold on yep hold on so so I'm just saying let me- I'll, be, I'll be very interested to see like how like by the time we get to Saturday what this the feeling is around it and it I mean I'm not saying it's the same thing whatsoever because obviously one's at home and one's not but it's it has the same feeling as like the Michigan Washington game too where there's just so many opinions on one side that it feels like we're all just being trapped and we're all just getting tricked um I I think Marcel Reed is the answer I think that's what is the difference between the Notre Dame game and the Missouri game but we'll see we'll see and it's uh, it being in a, a 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock kick in College Station also does. Like I just like early SEC games, early any conference games always make me nervous. Well, that diminishes. It's well known. I mean, I think that's well known that the 11 a.m. diminishes the home field advantage. You're you're never going to be as fired up for. You're never going to have as big and loud a crowd for 11 a.m. that you're going to have at 6:30 with the whole nation watching. So, like, I don't know. It just gives me pause. That's all. Um, so we got a lot of games to talk about and and, and dive into. We can do it via the categories. Um, Game days at, at at Cal Miami, which God bless Cal and God bless Miami. But what does that tell you about this week? Son, son, hey son, son, son. Walk into the other room so I can't hear you. Okay. All right. Sometimes I got a dad. Hey, you know what? It's okay. I'm in Chicago, so you won't hear mama, mama, mama this time. But just remember, you yelled at me for that, and then you got humbled real quick. I did not yell at you. <gasps> I yelled at you because he was making noise. As soon as he said "mama," I was like, "That's the coolest thing I've ever heard." That's what I'm saying. He humbled you. Yeah. Uh, well, it didn't. You, the humbling of me rarely lasts long. That's true. Uh, that's let's do some business. Okay. Uh, pork rinds. So I do not have them with me in the hotel right now. I wish I did because I would be eating the spicy dill, Brandon. Uh, they truly are the best snack. You know, I was looking at the, I opened up a new bag of spicy dill yesterday, and on the front it says, you know, less than one carb per serving. 
tons of grams of protein. I was like, this is the perfect snack because you feel like you're you're being guilty. You feel like you're 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 being naughty, but you're not. Porkrinds.com, the Southern recipe pork rinds are the best. We've talked about all the flavors before. Spicy dill is, is my favorite, Brandon's favorite. We've got the hot honey. We've got the sweet barbecue. We've got the salt and pepper. That crunch is just so good. And it really is one of those snacks that you don't have to feel guilty eating. You can throw the crackers and the chips and the pretzels out. Go to porkrinds.com and get them. And I would assume they're probably a pretty big hit at tailgates. Like we don't get to tailgate during the college football season because we have to work. But my guess is, especially in the South, Brandon, can you imagine just like a big old bowl of pork rinds that you can just throw on with the hamburgers and the hot dogs and all the like? They're a great side option too. I can't imagine a big old bowl, bowl of pork rinds, and I enjoy the thought. <laughs> I'm sure you. And you know what, Brandon's ass would be over there just taking handfuls of the spicy dill. We love them. Porkrinds.com. The crunch is yours. Go find your crunch time hero. They're our, they're our best friends when it comes to snacks. Poor I Brian's love them. Snacks. They're great. They're great. All right. We look around this country and we say, what's the most, this game that excites us the most? What's our upset alert? What's our under the radar game? What's our game with two overtime potential? What's our player to watch? And what's the cover your, the Liam Blutman Memorial cover your eyes game of the week. Now I, I'd like to say something before we get to the categories. There is some news out there uh, about, conferences about UTEP talking to this conference and uh, this team talking to this team from this conference. I have, I'm officially done. I'm beaten down by it. I, I, I just, I, I don't give a fuck if UTEP's talking to the Mountain West or the Pac-12 or NATO. I don't give a fuck if two MAC teams are talking to the UN. I don't give a fuck Go where you're going and tell me later. I just can't care anymore. Am I, don't I, am I alone? No, you're not. You you are not. And and honestly, like, and maybe this is like I, I mean no disrespect, but a lot of disrespect to the teams that are being talked about. The big ones have already happened, right? Like we've already seen the SEC change adding OU in Texas. We've obviously seen all the Big Ten teams like adding from the Pac-12. Like I just don't care. I just don't care. Like let me know when it's fully done. Like right now we're on the precipice of the SEC and the Big Ten potentially like being a super league and leaving everybody else behind anyways. So just tell me when it's done at this point. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Blutman, you're more of a small conference guy than the rest of us. Uh, your thoughts? I'm very annoyed by it. Uh, I want to go back to where we were like five years ago. Uh, I'm done with this. It's really annoying. Like simple as that. Fair enough. All right. That, we talked about it. So, <laughs> um Big Ev, I'll start with you. You look around this country this week, and the the slate is is thin. It's thin as far as ranked on ranked matchups. It's thin as far as marquee matchups. Uh, a lot of top ten teams are playing, not top ten teams. But what game excites you the most? To me, I think it's got to be Ole Miss South Carolina. I want to see Ole Miss in a bounce back spot. I want to see what kind of team is this. Can can they can they go smash South Carolina on the road and, and maybe people are like, hey, you know what? Maybe they can bounce back from the Kentucky loss or they go on the road, play maybe a more physical team and lose or maybe even win and struggle with them. And we sit here and we say, no, Ole Miss was frauds all along. They were oh. puppies. They're not real. Um, from your lips to God's ears, buddy. <laughs> but, yeah, that, I just I want to see Jackson Dart. I want to see this team uh, play another t- – I mean, South Carolina, very good defensive line. A lot of talent there. A lot of good pass rushers. Very yeah. curious to see how that offensive line holds up. It's another physical team, so I think that's that's the one I'm looking forward to the most. I want to see Ole Miss again. Yeah, and uh, kind of indicative of where we are this week that that is your most exciting game because uh, it might come up again. Uh, Blutman, what game excites you the most? Yeah, I mean, it would have come up again, but I'll pivot. Uh, I think Ev hit every point on the head there perfectly. I'm just going to go wait, wait, this before, you, before I let you go, Casey, did you have that game as well? I did. Well, I had a in Missouri, but we already talked about that one. Like that one's obviously the homer in me, but yes, it was. Oh, gonna be- it was going to be a four person sweep. Ole Miss, <laughs> North Carolina. Yeah. Yes. That is pathetic. That is so sad. All right, Blutman, you do your pivot, and we'll and I'll work on my pivot. Now. I'm going to pivit a third time. I get. To, can I? Can I take it? Blutman, go ahead. I'll, I'll figure the, out. The, I'll pivot. say it as well. This is a third pivot because I did come to the show prepared to go with the and Mizzou, and then just it's <laughs> such can. a depressing thought to go with it. So I'm not going to. Uh, we're we're doing this one for one player. Utah State, Boise State. Ashton Genty's rushing prop on DraftKings is 193 yards at minus 110. Do you know how ludicrous 
that is. The guy's rushing prop is 192 and a half. He's on pace to rush for 2,535 yards, 39 touchdowns. He's on pace for 1,761 yards after contact, and he's on pace to break the record of forced missed tackles by over, like, 30. He's on pace for 132. Uh, I, I, Ashton Genty is the game to watch for me. Isn't uh, isn't this isn't the line like for him to score three touchdowns? It's minus like one twenty or like one thirty. See the line for him to score one touchdown? Like thir- minus thirty five hundred. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> crazy, preposterous. Uh, Casey, what's your pivot? I mean, I'm gonna just pivot back. I'm gonna I'm doing like a an Uno reverse pivot back. Um, I'm gonna say Missouri A and M, and we've already talked about the game. The most we've talked about any game has been this game. But just from a standpoint of, like, I, I do want to see, you know, how a and really starts to move forward. I mean, they beat Arkansas, but Arkansas is always, you know, a weird game, especially at any time they played at and and Stadium, which is now done, and it'll go back to the, the home fields. But Missouri with Marcel Reed against, uh, as our quarterback, will, will tell me a, a real story about where this team is. And then, you know, like we said, Missouri, I do feel like is getting disrespected. Like, sure, they had to go into, was it two overtimes with Vanderbilt? You know, they, they barely escaped somebody else. And I can't remember – who was it? Austin College. Austin College. Yes, BC. So, like, just some really icky games. But this will be a good indication of where these teams are. And, I like, I think we know who the top of the top of the SEC is. And then that next tier, we're kind of waiting to see. And I think a and Missouri are kind of in the bottom of that next tier and just kind of see everything shakes out. Uh, but to be fair, Ole Miss, South Carolina was my actual answer. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, cause I think you can get creative in a situation like this, uh, cause it was going to be Ole Miss, South Carolina. And, um, uh, you know, certainly that, that one still applies. Texas A&M, Missouri is another one. Those are two very solid games. And, and I want to add to big of South Carolina point, you know, when we watched them play LSU at home in a spot, very similar to this, it was pro it was one of the games of the year. It was an incredibly entertaining game from start to finish. So if they've got that in them again, we'll be in for a treat. Uh, but I think we know the top of the Big Ten is going to shape up over the next few weeks. Ohio State plays Iowa this week. Oregon plays uh, – play Friday night. Oregon plays somebody they're going to kill. Um, Michigan State. State. Michigan State, thank you very much. Uh, but we'll see Oregon, Ohio State next week. We'll start to see the, the Big Ten really take shape at the top of the conference. In the SEC, we've got big matchups coming, but I want to see the top of the SEC uh, all across the board and how they perform this week because Alabama's in a kind of a, a sleepy spot against Vanderbilt. Georgia's it right back from going to Alabama into a rivalry spot, which is a bad team they're playing. But we've seen Auburn play Georgia's dicks off over recent years when they've had worse teams. Ole Miss is in South Carolina. Do we think they're at the top of the SEC? Missouri's at AM. Do we think they're at the top of the AC at the SEC? So everybody who's jockeying for position in the SEC is doing so this week and trying to line up for where they're going to be down the stretch. I think watching the top of that conference unfold, because Texas, I believe, is off. Um you have but, Tennessee, uh, Arkansas. You have Tennessee, Tennessee, Arkansas. Arkansas. Thank you very I, much. I, Arkansas, Tennessee. too. Tennessee, Arkansas, yeah. very much. I, I like there's there's a lot of either letdown spots or, or hot spots for these this top of the SEC. And usually for a top of a conference, you're talking a battle of three or four teams. It's probably a battle of six or seven teams in that league right now. I can't say that in the Big Ten. I think there's three or four that have separated. And it hasn't happened yet in the SEC, so I think you need to watch that as we go forward uh, this week. All right. Um, under the radar game. The under the radar game in college. Why are we both doing that? I don't know. That was really weird. The under the radar game and all Blumman. three of us. Blumman. The okay. under the radar game <laughs> in college football. This one's easy because there's a lot of them, I think. So this one might go four different ways. Big F. I'm going to show the Big Ten some. I think it's Rutgers, Nebraska. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, this is, the, I mean, this is just, this is the game where if Rutgers goes on the road and beats Nebraska, we start seriously talking about them. We start giving them like real, not just like, oh, like good for Rutgers attention. We yeah. start giving them some real love. Like, hey, this might be a team we got to seriously look at that can make some noise in the Big Ten. Uh, Nebraska is a seven-point favorite. I think I'll probably be on Rutgers with the points. I think that I think that there no coach or team in Greg Schiano and Rutgers is better just mucking it up, defense, run the football. 
Um, yeah, I love this game. And also Nebraska, a great spot for them to kind of reestablish themselves. They let the Illinois game slip away. There's still only one loss. I mean, they beat Rutgers here. They're right back on track. Uh, yeah, I think this is a sneaky, like, very big game in the Big Ten. Yeah, that's a very good one. Uh, Blutman, under the radar game. For me, it's got to be Nevada-San Jose State because a guy like me is a fan of good offense and good scheming, and I love, absolutely love what San Jose State's got with the spread and shred offense. I I found out about it a little before a season started with offense coordinator Craig Stuthman coming in and bringing that out. And it's kind of fun seeing Ken Niamatololo not coach an option attack. It's pretty interesting. San Jose State's a pretty good team. They, I think they did addition by subtraction in the coaching position. I think Niamatololo is a better coach than Brent Brand was. I think Brand kind of underachieved in years past there at San Jose State, even though it's a tough job. The spread tread offense is a joy to watch. Nick Nash, one of the best receivers in the country that you don't know about. All in on watching San Jose State this year. Very fun team. Casey. I'm pivoting. I had two written down right here. Nebraska Rutgers was the first one, but I'm going to go with UCF Florida, and it's going to be a gross game. It's going to be disgusting, but Florida is coming off of a bye week, and the reason I think it's under the radar is because now UCF obviously got killed by Colorado last week. We saw that KJ Jefferson stunk, whatever. If Florida loses this game, I think Billy Napier gets fired. And that is why I think it's so under the radar. Now, I think UCF is favored by like two and a half at this point, I think. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what I looked like, but I mean, it is a disgusting display of football. But Florida coming off of a bye week, was there anything that happened in the last two weeks that's going to save Billy Napier's job and say, okay, we're going to kick the can further down the road? Or is this just going to be a bounce back spot for UCF and that whole debacle that happened last week against Colorado and they come out and they take it out on Florida and on Sunday or on Saturday night when we're doing our recap podcast, we're talking about who's going to be the next Florida head coach. All right. I I guess y'all, I also wrote down two and y'all left both on the table. So I'm going to say both of them. Uh, give me SMU at Louisville. Uh, SMU has uh, has kind of righted their ship. Uh, playing Florida State in 2024 will do that for you. Uh, if you want to feel good about yourself, get the Seminoles on the schedule as fast as you can possibly do it. Congratulations, Clemson, this week, by the way. Uh, but SMU is scoring points again. They look comfortable in their own skin again. And they now have an ACC win under their belt, and they're going on the road uh, to play Louisville, who is coming off – they lost to Notre Dame. They lost at Notre Dame 31-24. There was certainly nothing to be ashamed of there. There was also not, not a whole lot to be excited about. It's just one, it's just a it was very much like Louisville's whole season. Just kind of happened. And they're better than just kind of happened. I think they might be behind behind Miami and uh and, and Clemson. Is this the battle for the third best team in the ACC? It very well might be. And the other one is four and one Texas Tech on the road against three and one Arizona. Arizona with the big win at Utah last week. Texas Tech kind of got a little bit of something going, a little bit. Uh, I don't think they're a great team, but this this Big Twelve man, like every game might be big. Every every single game because I I don't know who's who's the best team. I Iowa State's probably the best team, but like every single game might have a little bit more weight behind it than you think. Yes, Blutman, that made you smile a little bit. Because the Big 12 slogan could be, every game might be big. <laughs> and I, I had a chuckle at that. You you enjoyed that? Yeah, I had the thought of the Liam Big 12 the, logo, every game might be big. Whenever yeah. Liam gets the little smirk and like his yeah. eyes kind of glimmer a little bit, it's very cute. I just love, I, I like a time lapse of Blutman from this moment on Wednesday nights when he's fresh faced and looks yeah. good and everything. And just, I want, I want a shot of him Thursday night, Friday night and Saturday night. And I just want to see him go from this to what we're going to see Saturday night. I well, And Brandon, not to mention, like, I think what it isn't today, like the last day or something, there's not going to be college football until like November, November 29th. Yeah. Yeah. So like, this is the freshest we're going to see Blutman for months months you're gonna be okay on the other side i'm all good all good <laughs> all good jesus lord help me uh all right what teams need to be on upset alert i'll start with blutman here because you haven't started one yet all right thanks man appreciate that i'm going look don't do that when the slate is gross as okay. we have talked about in prior minutes sure stuff you don't expect happens 
when a team like Miami plays an emotional Friday night game that they slip away from in the final seconds with what we could say is sure a controversial call, even though all four of us believe they got it right. Now they've got to fly cross country and they've got to play the woke mafia of the Cal golden bears. That ain't easy. I know I referenced this two weeks ago. That game is not easy. Cal on the other hand, Last time they played, they lost to Florida State. They scored nine points. Ew, gross, pathetic. They can't beat anyone, surely. They had a bye week. They're going to come out playing good. They're going to come out well-prepared. They're going to have a big effort. Their run game reliable. Jay and Ott, a little more rested, a little more healthy. He hasn't been healthy all year. I like I like Cal in this spot. I, I like Cal to maybe a little spooky late night October at Memorial Stadium. Let's see what we could do. Casey, uh, you're upset alert. I mean, I just, I'm smiling just listening to Bloodman. It's just so good. Uh, we we talked about it off the top of the show, but it, I think it's Michigan and, and Washington. Like, I understand, and we've all been saying it, it's beating a dead horse about how bad this Michigan offense looks. Um, but they have figured out, other than losing to Texas, they figured out how to sneak these games out. And Washington is just not very good. Right? They're three and two. You know, it's at home. Fine. But like they need to be on upset alert. Like Michigan, Michigan is finding ways to win. What? Hold on. This is. I'm glad you said this, because this is a very interesting point of contention for for people and for me. Okay. And, and this is whatever. And I know what you're. Let's just make sure we're getting everything clear, because when some people think of upsets, they think of upsets against the spread only. When I think of upsets, I only think of upsets being against. Uh, the ranking. So I know what you're doing. Yeah. So let's make sure we're clear to everybody out there. If you're watching, there are multiple ways to think about this. There's the way she thinks about it. There's the way I think about it. Because I actually wrote down Michigan, Washington, too. I just have Michigan on upset alert. Um, Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. They're the number 10 team in the country. So here's where my brain does like backflips on each other, right? Is You know what I'm saying. I have one brain, but you know, it, it's, it's a hamster wheel in there Got it. because upset alert Michigan, who is number 10, also makes sense. But when they are an underdog from a Vegas standpoint, that is also an upset in my head. So you could really do it in or any way. So I guess that's just the upset game because both of them should be on upset alert in some different type of way. So the same principle applies in College Station when Texas A&M is trying to upset a top 10 team or top 11 team. But they're they're favored. So uh, I didn't write. I, I wrote those down just because I wanted to have this exact conversation. Uh, but I'm glad you said it as well, yours, so we could have it. Well, I mean, I I think that I probably used both. Like I, I'm sure that in in different arguments, depending on what my argument is, like it's like whenever you you know if you're a driver, you get mad at the the people that are walking. If you're walking, you get mad at the driver. That's kind of how I feel about this. But I do think that like normally it is ranking. But if I'm looking at betting on it. Then, I mean, Eva, what do you, do you take ranking to? This to me is like a checker on a checker. Like I wouldn't, you would call it an upset either way. Like oh. they like ex, to me, they like they like x each other out. Yeah, I, I just I don't know. I just I always think ranking first when it comes to uh, to me. An upset is a ranked team getting beat by an unranked team or a lower ranked team. That's what an upset is to me. It can mean many things to many people. So here's a question for you. And like this, I know we talk about like people storming the field a lot. So, like, I've seen it before where this has happened, right? Like, the the team that gets beat is a higher ranking, but then they're, like, the, the students storm the field. They're, like, they were favored. Why are they storming the field? But then you're, like, but they beat it. Like, A&M, I hope they don't storm Kyle Field for beating Missouri, but they might. They're a top-10 team. So, it's, like, I don't yeah. know. It goes back and forth. Big Ev, what's your upset pick? Upset alert. Um, I think it's USC. I think they're in a little muddy waters here going to Minnesota playing the Gophers, P.J. Fleck. Uh, we've ranted quite a bit, me and Blutman have, about how dog shit of a coach Lincoln Riley is. Uh, another game where, I, uh, I mean, they just took Michigan pretty close. I mean, covered the spread, kept it close. They scored to make it a three-point game with like a minute or so left. Um, and I think they probably have a little bit more threat. They might, defense might not be as good as Michigan's, but I think more of a threat to throw the ball. Uh, I think this is a weird game for USC. We're going to see more of this. We've already seen them kind of fall in a spot like this. Um, yeah, I think Minnesota could be a little little scary spot there for USC. All right, so it's up to me. And and listen, and I like that pick too. Um, I think Ole Miss is certainly an upset alert. I'm not going to pick them because I don't look like I'm picking on them. 
even though I am picking on them. But they are in an upset alert situation. Like, they better be on their P's and Q's. Now, I'm going left field. I'm going wild card. Blutman's eyes are going to go like that when I say my pick. Picture this. Hasn't everything been a little too perfect for Indiana? Hasn't Ooh. everything been a little too Uh-oh. shiny for Indiana? Uh-oh. This is Indiana. This, this this ain't Alabama. This ain't Ohio State. This is Indiana at 5-0. and oh. Doesn't it feel like they would stub their toe on a sleepy Saturday on, in front of 15,000 disinterested people on the banks of Lake Michigan? Like, this just smells really fucking funny to me because – Indiana is not used to being here. Indiana is not used to, to to this. It is a new everything there. And hasn't everything been a little too perfect? This smells funky to me. You're daunted. You're daunted. You're daunted. You're daunted. You're daunted. You're absolutely daunted. I'm not daunted. You're so daunted. See, Mate, that's the problem it. with these segments. When, when when we look at these and we say, oh, this one, this one, this one, and, and a lot of them make sense, right? But when somebody goes out in the left field, when somebody takes a left turn, when somebody gets a bold-ass statement, we're like, no, you're daunted. What the fuck does your daunted even mean? That, that's just the Indiana thing, player. I will say this with Indy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, you did. Yes, did you, you play on me? I did. I did. <laughs> sure did. How'd that feel? It didn't feel good. I know it did. <laughs> now you know how I felt last episode. Play it. <laughs> Play it, me. All right. But that's my pick. No, and you can't stop. Yeah, that, that's pick. fine. That's fine. To argue this, I'll say they did go in the UCLA, a quite sleepy Rose Bowl for their fans. They'll probably be for their fans on Saturday, too, at Northwestern. And they, I mean, blink of an eye, that game didn't matter. Uh, I think the difference here is Coach Signe is one of the best coaches in the country and has his team well prepared every single week. Now, if you're right, you're right. And credit to you, you're best in biz for a reason. That was uh, that was a makeup call. Pull you that, was, <laughs> that was a total makeup call right there. Also, you you think that was the first time the the words consecutively daunted and playa have ever been used in a I sentence? Think, I, I think it was the first That's time he's true. ever said the word playa. That ain't true. I, that might be the first time a Blutman has ever said the word player. That ain't true. No, it no. rolled off his tongue too easily. He's been saying it a lot more. We're just not giving him credit. Yeah, I've said it in the mostly sports the the house. tons of times. He's gonna drop a. He's gonna drop a. Forget about it, cuh, Later on, <laughs> <laughs> we did that today, right? I said, forget about it, cuh. <laughs> <laughs> Why you're so white? Oh. <laughs> huh. uh, we got more business? <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, so, Brandon, I know that you've been getting your steps in. I actually, I called you the other morning. I don't even remember what I was calling you for, but you were telling me, you are like, I'm getting my steps in. And I would assume right after you got your steps in, you went and grabbed yourself an Orgain protein shake because I've been in your studio a lot recently and you've got a whole pack of them. They are delicious. They're the leader in real protein powder nutrition that understands that being good for you doesn't have to taste bad. And we've talked about this. I mean, I've only had the chocolate because I just absolutely love chocolate protein. You've had the vanilla. They're phenomenal. Yeah, they sit right. If you want to know where they are in your Chicago office, they are right behind my desk at mostly. That I have I have my uh, my computer charger, and then I have my Orgain uh, smoothie. Or not my smoothies, but Orgain protein shakes uh, right there. And every day I walk for an hour, and as soon as I get done, I walk in there, plug my computer in, and pick up a uh, I almost a smoothie again, a uh, protein shake, and I'm ready to go. Yeah, they they have 30 grams of protein in them, which is a ton of protein. And a lot of people who, whether you're even trying to like be healthier or not, getting a lot of protein, getting a, the amount of protein that your body needs can be difficult, not with Orgain, because not only do they have 30 grams of protein in all their shakes, they also have nine essential amino acids. So it's giving your body what you need. We love them. Uh, they're available at Costco. They're available at Orgain.com. And if you want to get in on the delicious protein pack nutrition today, head to Orgain.com slash rough and use code rough and you'll get 20% off your order. Once again, that's Orgain, O-R-G-A-N.com backslash rough for 20% off and make sure you use our code rough. We sent you, we sent you rough. And if you want to get in shape like Brandon's getting in shape, Orgain's your best friend. Taking a little bit longer than I would have liked it, but we're, we're, we're getting there. Hey, you know what? Progress is progress, baby. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we got three more categories. We go to our game with two overtime potential, which I think this this slate could be full of them. 
Um, because it just does feel like one of those days where you're like, I'm, I don't know, I'm not that excited about college football. Oh my God, that feels like that could be one of these weeks. Big Ev, give me a two overtime game potential. I, I have the answer. I say that every time. You say that every week. I found it though. This time I found it. I have, right. I, I have the one. We're going out west. Hawaii, San Diego State. That's the <laughs> one. This game finds overtime. I'm a big Schrager guy. Love Schrager at Hawaii. San Diego State's kind of a weird team. Obviously, we kind of think of them as this like always just kind of in the mix in the Mountain West. I think they're a little, little uh, not quite there this year. But Hawaii, I think, would be dangerous in this spot. I kind of like Hawaii in the game. But, yeah, this is this game is just classic chaos Mountain West potential here. I love it. How has Hawaii been treating you this year, Ev? I know you're a big Hawaii guy. I haven't. I bet them early in the year. I haven't bet them the last, like, few weeks. This is the first time I'm going to be back on them in probably the last, like, at least two, three weeks. They 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 almost hit big for me against UCLA. I was they were like my play of the week against UCLA. They covered. They should have went out right. I had them plus like four seventy five. So I guess they have been pretty good to me. But I took a few weeks off in Hawaii. We're back though. Blutman, which game's going to double overtime? I don't know if I get banned this week because my pick last week, Samford Furman, uh, the game never got played. Well, the good thing for you is none of the other three of us noticed. Not even a little bit. Heck yeah. Then we're going to App State Marshall, baby. Tune in to this one. A pair of two and two teams desperate in the Sun Belt to get on the board, get over 500 and figure things out. App State looks like a dumpster fire. Marshall looks all right. I really like receiver Christian Fitzpatrick. He's been a highlight reel machine this week. Maybe we see him get a sick catch in double OT. Very weird inflection at the end, Blutman. Whatever. Just we just ride the Blutman wave as long as we can stay on it. Um, Casey, what game has two overtime potential? Brandon, it's in the Big Twelve, and it's West Virginia, Oklahoma State, and neither one of these teams are living up to the hype thus far that both of these teams thought they had. We've got Garrett Green and and Alan Bowman, which is just not a sexy matchup whatsoever. But just in Stillwater, three o'clock Central. It just it just has a like a just a gross slugfest back and forth between these two teams. West Virginia is I think two and two, and Oklahoma State's three and two. Like very evenly matched teams, and neither one of these teams are where they thought they would be. And the Big Twelve, like you said, it's kind of wide open. Like I don't anticipate either one of these teams being up at the top, but they're still kind of that that you know next tier level of them fighting. And these teams are just very evenly matched. And like, is Ollie Gordon ever going to have a breakout game? I don't think so. And I think this game stays very close and could go into multiple overtimes. Well, you're a bitch because that was mine too. So oh. I'm pivoting. Okay. I said going forth is just not benefiting me with this group. Well, it's, you don't have to go forth. I'm I'm a classy guy. You know what this feels like? And I, I know that none of you are gonna appreciate this reference, but you all know it's true. That you know, you know when girls hang out together for a really long time, they all start to like sync up. Mm-hmm. That's what we've all done with our picks at this point. We all just spend so much time together. We've 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 synced up. Gross. Um, <laughs> I said you wouldn't appreciate it, but it's the best metaphor I could come up with. Mine's on a Friday night. Imagine you're uh, you're you're you, you had a long week at work and you you do watch some ball Friday night, but you you, you go to bed about nine thirty or ten, and then your 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 phone starts buzzing and it's Blutman, and he's like, uh, uh. Syracuse and UNLV are going to their third overtime. Like, what? Syracuse and UNLV, go to it now. That just feels – these two teams are so – like, I, I I can't imagine a world where Syracuse and UNLV have ever met in person. Like, I, I just don't feel like they've ever crossed paths. They just feel like from their two – they're two teams from different planets. So, them getting together is just – they're getting together to just have a random classic Friday night game. Is that is that weird, Blutman? No, I'll say what's a bit weird. The line opened at two and a half. It got all the way up to seven. I think it's hovering at like six, six and a half right now. People but. people are I mean, people like this UNLV team. They got better. They okay. All right. They I you you've had plenty of time. We're not you're not gonna high step in this end zone any longer about that. UNLV. It, it was just a sentence, a few words. They got better. Speaking uh, of Speaking of high stepping, did you see that they announced the uh, the Colorado Kansas State time that we're going to be like? I, I think it starts at like 
9 p.m. Eastern. So we'll be live watching the end of that game. Not that anybody else probably cares as much as me, but I just thought I'd let you guys know. All right. We have the player to watch this weekend. Uh, Blutman's, uh, he already used one of his categories to do a player to watch. So I'm anxious to see what he does here. In fact, I'll start with you, Blutman. You, right. you go ahead. All right. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I've even got a bonus one. We're starting with Thursday night, UTEP edge rusher Maurice Westmoreland. Eight tackles, zero sacks on a year. It's been disappointing for him. Uh, he's been he's an extremely athletic Juco proc, stands at six foot two, 235, quick and powerful, big time Ben. He's been struggling, but it's time for him to get on the board here and figure things out, pick up a sack or two, and really, you know, start gaining more me- momentum towards the 2025 NFL draft. Friday night, talk a lot about UNLV. A lot of focus goes to the offense. That defense is nasty. They've got a lot of dudes there, but none none better than Jalen Kyle on the safety. He's got 16 tackles, four interceptions this year, and two pass breakups. It is unfair that a guy of that caliber, that talent level, is playing it for a group of five team. He just looks like a 99 overall. It's unbelievable. Highly instinctual, superb athlete, sick range and ball skills. Legit NFL prospect that's finally gone healthy and is showcasing his full game. On Saturday, Washington wide receiver Denzel Boston, 30 catches for 412 and seven touchdowns here. I've been, you know, kind of modern, monitoring him for the last two years. Finally breaks into the receiver room after Odunze, Polk, and McMillan graduate to the NFL. Six foot four wide out, contested catch monster. Really good sound all around threat with exceptional skill. Then, I'm going with UConn corner as well. My bonus, Jameson Jam Robertson. Two interceptions on the season. He's nicknamed Jam for his impressive skills and press man. Physical and discipline. Love watching this kid play, Brandon. Well, it's probably nicknamed Jam because his his, his name's I Jameson. Guess. The first three letters of his name are Jam. I guess so. Fits his play style, though, doesn't it? You've watched a bit of him. Well, here's here's where I'm and Blutman, I'm just gonna be I'm gonna come out and say it, okay? And I don't know. Did you execute the idea I told you to execute today today or did you not? I thought so. Huh? I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? what? What was the idea? I executed well. I, okay. I said <laughs> he was sitting there coming up with his his players to watch, and he said, I, I don't know, I don't know who I'm gonna pick. And I said, dude. Just do it. Throw a fake one in there and see if we know. <laughs> so, <laughs> is there a fake player in there? Yeah, Jameson <laughs> Jam Robertson. Okay, all right. I knew, I knew it was him. When I, I, I so, Jam Robertson. When you said the name, I looked up to to see Brandon's reaction because I was like, that just sounds like a name I've never heard. But then I was like, well, knowing Liam, I probably never heard of half the people that he's talking about. So I'm just gonna keep letting him talk. I, I knew the Washington receiver. I Googled the first guy, Westmoreland. I so I was that. like, if y'all saw when he was doing it, I was like, I checked Maurice Westmoreland. He's real. I didn't hear the last name on the second guy. So it was between the second guy and the fourth guy. If you or Ev would have said that name, I would have been like, who the fuck are you talking about? But because it's it's Blutman, I was just like, well, obviously he knows like guys I Wait, have no clue that exist. Hold on. You gave your fake guy a nickname? Yeah, Jameson <laughs> Gam Robertson. Gam a whole identity. Good in press coverage, good interceptions. <laughs> I, I might not have done very many things right at Barstool, but I, I bringing this motherfucker along for the ride is the – I love it so much. It's I'm so sorry. good. And, Brandon, the fact that you were like, no, his his nickname is probably Jam because his name is Jameson. Like, he just made him up. <laughs> you were, like, doubling down, like, no, this is why his nickname is Jam. Of course that's why I gave him the name Jameson. Do you have multiple fictional players? No, because, like, whatever – you know, whatever I'd be like, – playing video games trying to come up with names i could never do it i couldn't come up for our name for uh mac dynasty i couldn't come up for it your your name is moose delicioso yeah because that was the name on ice cream day my month and day lined up to that casey How are you a real person who is your player to watch <laughs> normal sentence just how are you a real person? Uh, I have two. Ev already talked about one at length, so I'm just going to say Jackson Dart, obviously, bounce back situation. I know his offensive line was awful last week, too, but just to see what they look like against South Carolina. And then Clemson against Florida State. Obviously, I think Clemson is 
infinitely better. But we've talked a lot about this offense and how much better they look. And, you know, playing against Georgia at any point, especially to open the season, is really tough. I'm really looking to see how this offense and Kate Klubnick go against a Florida State team who, going into the preseason, I know I didn't, but I, I, believe, I believe you did. Like, a lot of people still thought that they had, you know, a decent chance in this conference. They don't. But if this Clemson offense is as good as we think they are, and if we think that it is truly like a Clemson-Miami race, then Clemson needs to go in and blow the doors off of Florida State. And Kate Klubnick and that offense need to score as many points as possible, call them style points, call them whatever. But Florida State is the absolute punching bag of the ACC. And if this Clemson offense is going to continue to to keep in that conversation and stay in that conversation of the top of the league, which they are, then they have to kill this team. And Kate Klubnick has a great opportunity against a Florida State team that can't stop the four of us. All right. Uh, I'm going to take two in the same game uh, just because I don't know which team's going to win, but I know whichever team wins, this guy will be will give you entertainment. Um, and I hate to do this. I hate to give credit, but you all know who leads the country in receiving yards, Blutman? Um, if I had to, ah, oh, shoot. No, I don't. Who? Oh, wait. Trey, Trey Harris at Ole Miss oh. not only leads the country in receiving yards, second place has 647 yards. Trey Harris has 804. He's 150 yards ahead of anybody else in the country when it comes to receiving yards. He's got 49 catches. Uh, why, why are you looking quizzical? Because I'm thinking, is Nick Nash second? No, uh, Jack Beck is second. From TCU. Uh, Nick Nash. Yeah. Who started off at LSU, I believe. Uh, uh, but but anyway, Trey Harris, if Ole Miss is going to bounce back and Ole Miss is going to go on the road and win, Trey Harris has to have a big game because I think there's a there's been a lot of talk about all their receivers and all their – they really just got him. They don't throw it to pre-scoring very much. Uh, Juice Wells has been a disappointment so far, although Juice Wells is going back to South Carolina this week. And on the other side, South Carolina is going to win that game well, Norris Sellers not only has to play, he has to play very well. Mm-hmm. And he did play well against LSU. They do beat LSU if he is able to be healthy throughout that game. We haven't seen him since. And I, I don't know. I don't know if he's playing. I think it's 50-50. I think all reports are is leaning towards him playing so far, unless I missed something over the last couple of hours. Um, but Lenore Sellers for Carolina and Trey Harris for Ole Miss, whoever wins that matchup individually, not an individual matchup, but whoever has a bigger game wins the game. Um, now did Ev go? Nope. Did he not? No. I apologize, Big F. You can go last every now and then, though. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a leadoff hitter. Yeah. Sorry. I uh, I mean, I, I said him at the beginning of the show. I think it's Will Rogers. I think I mean he's played phenomenally. I mean, he has 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, no picks. Now he's gonna he's got his biggest game of the season. And Michigan's coming to town. Uh, he was funny enough. He was on the sideline for the national title game. Just yeah. in a jersey, no plain clothes. Uh, but I mean, obviously, playing against Will Johnson, a top ten pick in the draft at corner, bunch of NFL guys on this team, especially on the defense. Uh, huge matchup for them, huge game for them. Uh, yeah, this could be big for him, even like NFL wise, if he has an NFL future. This is a game, but very excited to see what he's going to do if he if he can show it against his defense. So yeah, Will Rogers. All Ray, right, we go. What? Yeah, no, I, I want to use this time right now for a very exciting announcement. It's very exciting. Okay. We're doing a live Unnecessary Roughness recap episode next week. We sure are, baby. We are going to Cosm in Dallas. We are going to be there. And if you're listening to this and you're on social media, you've probably seen the viral clip and it was the AM Notre Dame game and everybody was tweeting. And I know the way I said it was I couldn't believe that it was inside a dome, that it wasn't actually at Kyle Field. They've got a Cosm in LA and they've got a Cosm in Dallas and they are so sick. And we're going to be there. We're going to be there to watch the Ohio State Oregon game. So we're going to be doing like a little game watch thing inside the dome there. We're going to feel like we're just at the game. And then we are going to record our epic, our infamous React podcast live at Cosm. That's awesome. What a day. Uh, What a day. We're going to be in Dallas and we're going to be able to, we're going to be at that awesome, incredible screen that looks like you are right in the end zone. It's, it's, it has to be the best watching experience you can possibly have. I can't wait to go to Cosm. I can't wait to be there. I can't wait to see uh, Roughness fans. And it, we're just happening to do it on. We're happening to do it on the best night of college football this year. And that 6:30 slate next week is loaded, including Oregon, Ohio State. I can't. I can't wait to get to Cosm next week.
Yeah, they call it like a shared reality because if you've, and again, if you've seen the clip, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but it it's a like a dome over you where you literally are sitting in the stadium, but you're not. You're sitting there, you're getting food and drinks. They're coming to you like you're sitting at a restaurant or a bar or a club, but you are in the game itself. And then they also have a different area where you can watch all the other games as well. They've got multi-view experiences. They've got everything. And the fact that we're going to get to be there, uh, spoiler, we'll already be in Dallas for a different reason. So we're going to just hop on over to Cosm. But they've also got the Cosm in LA this weekend. Missouri at uh, Texas A&M on October 5th is being showcased at the, the Cosm in LA. So you can just go and you can watch all these different games. But most importantly, you can watch them with us. So we are going to be there, which means if you are in Dallas or you're around the area, you should come out to Cosm. So come catch the Big Ten game of the evening, like we mentioned. And, Ev, I know that's huge for you. Or in Ohio State. I can't. I mean, I've been since I've seen this screen, I've been dying to go there and just to, to get to watch like the most the most important game to this point in the season on the greatest day of college football. I mean, it literally become debates of October 12th, wedding debates, how good this slate is. So to be at like the, the best place probably in the, the world to watch college football uh, on the best day of college football, it's just fantastic. Yeah, the energy is going to be absolutely insane. And then, of course, anytime we can get out around, if you are you know, a roughneck, obviously, if you're listening to this, you probably are. If you're not, tell your friends, come on out. We're going to be so excited. Check it out and all the upcoming events because they've got stuff going on all the time and not just college football. They have they have UFC, they have NFL, they've got everything. So go to Cosm.com, that's C-O-S-M.com, and check out Cosm's upcoming events. And again, we will be there. Unnecessary roughness. I think this is the first time we've ever done a React podcast live right it has to be i mean we do it live every week but like we're actually going to be together live with people around and i will have had a few high noons so i'm responsibly yeah we're gonna have a good time it's gonna be great come see us at cosm in dallas october the 12th um all right it's the liam blutman memorial cover your eyes game of the week big ab i start with you uh this one to me was easy it's uh it's thursday night it's Sam Houston, UTEP. When you have two quarterbacks who have combined thrown more picks than touchdowns, that's a disgusting, gross football game. UTEP might be the worst team in Division One football. They are truly an atrocity. Uh, yeah, Sam Houston State, UTEP. Gross game. Earl Carver. What, man? UTEP wearing the El Chuco alternate helmets on Thursday night. For me, <laughs> one of them. I got two. I'm sorry. One of them, KJ Jefferson plays football. Gross. So gross. Vile, disgusting. I want to throw up thinking about it, but I won't. Then two. So bad. Utah Tech at North Alabama. Now, uh, hear me out. 0-5 Utah Tech, formerly known as Dixie State. 1-5 North Alabama. The quarterbacks coming into the season, Utah Tech had Deacon Hill. You remember Deacon Hill, Iowa kid, terrible, terrible, chunky quarterback. He stinks. He might have been benched for this kid, Reggie Graff. That goes to show how bad the quarterback play there is. North Alabama, their starting quarterback was Ari Patu. Do you remember him from Stanford? He might have been benched for this kid, TJ Smith. The quarterback play here has to be extraordinarily terrible. Do not watch that game. You weren't going to anyway. Don't even think about it. (laughs) Your cover your eyes game is a game that people have no idea how to watch and might not even have the option to watch it. They have the option to watch it. It's on the plus. (laughs) It's on the plus. On the plus. It's on the plus. All right. Sorry. Casey, your cover your Liam Blutman Memorial Cover Your Eyes game of the week. So this is a cover your eyes moment for one team, probably not the other team. And I know, Brandon, you mentioned it when you were talking about all your games to watch as part of like the SEC. I think Georgia is going to boat race Auburn. I think Auburn is going to get mollywopped up and down that field. Georgia, I mean, first of all, Auburn stinks. Like Auburn is so fucking terrible. They have a and no quarterback basically because they have no good options. And Georgia is one of those teams that we know how talented they are. And they, 
fine, they made it a game. It's been the game of the year thus far. But they are going to take every ounce of aggression that they have off of what happened last week against Alabama, going down 28-0, to still losing, having to hear all week, oh, Alabama's still your daddy. It doesn't matter. Nick Saban's there. Georgia at home. 24 point favorite so like it's not a surprise but i think they are going to murder this team auburn fans are down so bad so auburn fans cover your eyes folks because you're about to get ev- like you're you're basically going to be made a bitch because of how mad they are about what happened last week all right my cover your eyes game of the week is there are there are games with two worse teams than this game but this game just kind of depresses me because of mm-hmm. where these teams are how watchable they've been in the past and where they are currently it's Purdue at Wisconsin. Purdue is just PU stinky gross, and there's nothing redeeming about them at all. Wisconsin is depressing because when they hired Luke Fickle, I thought we were going to see a new exciting day of Wisconsin football, but really they just took Wisconsin's identity, threw it in the trash, and didn't replace it with anything. There's nothing visually appealing about them. They're on a backup quarterback. It's It's – I don't know what they're trying to do. They don't know what they're trying to do. Nobody seems really sure of themselves at Wisconsin. So I don't like watching them play. Purdue, I don't like watching them play. And I just cover your eyes when these two teams get together because it's it's going to be depressing, in my opinion. Depressing. And you are – you're so right about the Luke Fickle experiment. Like, I feel like, I mean, we were we were super high on it. We have no ties to Wisconsin. Everybody in the world was super high on it. Just, and it like the – it was who – what was a better hire, Luke Fickle or Matt Rule? I that's mean, true. yeah, it was certainly a discussion point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was like, who, like, what's more, you know, that, like, that conversation happened. I don't. It's not even close to a debate right now. Um. All right. So we have uh, to to finish this out. We have our weekly unnecessary reference dog of the week parlay presented by DraftKings, and this thing is pretty hot. There's been what five weeks? We've hit it twice. Two out of five at these odds is fantastic. Once again. It is the uh, DraftKings, or the Unnecessary Roughness Dog of the Week Parlay presented by DraftKings. After we finish building our card, uh, we'll talk more about it. This week, DraftKings has a college football parlay profit boost. All you have to do is head to the app and opt in. So head to the app now to check out our bet and claim this week's boost. And here is the bet. Big F, start us off. Mine is, I was on Cincy last week. They played Texas Tech. Now I'm on Texas Tech this week, going to Arizona Texas Tech plus six. Uh, they struggled to begin the year. Had a real bad, real bad showing against Wazoo. They've been hot since. I think they found something. Offense found something. Ben Morton's been really good. Ton of yards, touchdowns. Taj Brooks, one of the best running backs in the country. Um, I think there's too many points. I'm, I'm not sold in Arizona just because they beat a, a down Utah team. Um, I think that was a bad performance. I think Texas Tech can keep this close. I think they can win it. I think they're live dogs here. Give me Texas Tech plus six. Texas Tech plus six from Big F. Blutman. Me? <laughs> you didn't even say my name. Yes, he did. Oh, I coughed at the exact time he said that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He goes, Blutman. <laughs> he, was, he was. I pr- I did not hear that. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> Crazy. I, 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 Brandon, I, this is the start of the timeline. This is like, you know, you I know. I'm very sorry. Okay. Um, the more and more I think about the Miami Cal game, the more and more it feels like they are begging people to take Miami at minus 10. That line feels if Miami is this true big bad wolf that is so good, that is a top 10 team that has these national championship uh, aspirations and everything. You're playing that cow, maybe a little more than 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 ten points, maybe something like a 14 and a half, 15. I think I think this Miami line is kind of sneaky. It's a bit of bait. I'll take Cal at home plus ten. All right, Texas Tech plus six, Cal plus ten. Casey, I am taking Boston College plus one and a half against Virginia. So they uh, Cassianos is back, and I know Virginia has had a, a decent defense. I think Virginia is awful, and I think Boston College probably wins this game. But I do think that now he's back. I mean, they, they survived a close call without him against, I think it was Western Kentucky. What, man? Was it Western Kentucky? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take Boston college. Like I, again, like anybody who beat Florida state early in the season, like got a, you know, a boost just because Florida state was supposed to be good. They're not. I still think Boston college is a better team than Virginia. And I think that he'll test that Virginia secondary. And so I'm going to take 
Boston College plus one and a half for the underdog parlay, but I think they win this game outright. Texas Tech plus six, Cal plus 10, and Boston College plus one and a half. I will finish it off. And uh, it might be a little basic and it might be a little, maybe even a little square, but uh, I watch South Carolina play the dick off of LSU in, in Columbia. I, Columbia is a hard place to play, and it would have been a hard place to play if Ole Miss won last week. And Ole Miss showed some uh, bad tendencies against Kentucky. Their offensive line couldn't handle pressure and physicality, and South Carolina is has more pressure and is more physical than Kentucky is on the defensive line. Uh, we saw that when they bullied the hell out of them. Uh, I like South Carolina plus nine and a half. I don't know if they win the game, but I love them to keep it within the number, play another exciting game like they did against LSU. Uh, so there it is. It is Texas Tech plus six. It is Cal plus 10. It is Boston College plus one and a half and South Carolina plus nine and a half. That is your dog of the week parlay presented by DraftKings. This week, DraftKings has a college football parlay profit boost. All you have to do is head to the app and opt in. Head to the app now to check out our bet and claim this week's boost. All right, there you go. Week six coming up, and we will be uh, live on Saturday night to recap it right after the uh, 6.30 games, 6.30 Central Time games, 7.30 Eastern Time games. Um, anybody got anything to add? No, I'm trying to think. What's the the marquee? I, I know a and Missouri is in the morning. What's the marquee night game? Why am I forgetting this right now? Uh, it's, uh, just... Well, it's uh, – I mean, Miami Cal. Is Arkansas? Miami Cal is at 10.30 Eastern. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's Michigan, Washington. Yeah, you got Michigan, Washington. It's Nevada, yeah. San Jose Arkansas. State. Yeah, I mean, God. Nevada, San Jose State. Gross. Duke, good. Georgia Tech, too, kind of sneaky good. I know the that line I'm gonna screams see. Georgia Tech, but we're yeah. going to see some crazy shit happen as we do. But boy, this slate stinks out loud in comparison to last week and next week. All right, so we'll see you Saturday night. Thanks for everybody watching, and uh, that's unnecessary roughness.